Hi guys, welcome back to another fantastic art video. So, kind of a backstory of what inspired me to make this video is I think probably 98% of people that I've ever talked to, when I tell them that I'm an artist or just that I draw or I draw people, then their first response is, oh wow, I can't even draw a good stick figure. So today I am going to show everyone that you can draw a good stick figure and even better, you can draw an actual anime guy's face. So grab any paper and any pencil or pen that you find on hand and draw with me. I'm going to show you how to make an anime face from the basic steps on how to make a good stick figure. So to start out, I am demonstrating a bad stick figure. And technically he's not even really that bad. You could call him stylized. But let's say you want to have a perfect circle and perfect straight limbs and body for your stick figure. Let's face it, if you're a beginner artist, that's not going to happen for a long time. But just know, that's okay. It takes a lot of practice. But instead of taking years on practice and making perfect lines and circles, which even for professionals is very hard to achieve all the time, what you're going to need to do is start by just making several short lines. Just like when you make little hash marks in a scorekeeping, you just put them on top of each other instead. So then he'll look like that thicker stick figure that I drew secondly. So now what you're going to do is take that same concept and apply it to all your other artwork. So. I'm making little dashes in a circle motion and just cleaning it up as I go. Magic of erasers. So then I have a not perfect, but to the eye, looks okay circle. And that's going to be the base for our head. So once you make your circle, then you're going to take an arced line using the same method down the face and that's going to tell you the direction that his face is pointing. I have found that it's easier to make a three quarter view face as opposed to a straight on face. That way you don't have to worry as much about symmetry. So then you're just going to start mapping it out from there. What I'm doing here is using different colors to kind of show you that most of these colors aren't necessary for your sketch, but I'm using them to show you how I space things out and what angles things are at. So the red marks are to show you that from the halfway point of the circle where the eyebrows go, it's the same size from the bottom of the circle down, and that's the bottom of your chin. Real quick, I'm showing that on the circle, I straighten the lines to make the eyebrow curve. When you have the three-quarter view, you can kind of see where your head bumps out for the eyebrow. Then I'm making from that point line straight down to the middle of our directional guideline to the face, and that's going to map out our cheek to chin space. So it takes a little bit of practice to get the right angle, but what you can do is start with a straight line and kind of build it up and tweak it from there as you go. And for the other side, because you're going to be able to see the curve and point of the jawline, what you do is go about halfway in between the eyebrow line and the bottom of the circle and that's where your jaw hits the ear. Keeping it easy for complete beginners, you can just make straight lines straight from the halfway point of mark that you just made to the bottom of the circle is going to be 
the straight part of your jaw that connects to the ear and then you can go straight in and complete that V shape of your cheek to chin line. Now in the light blue, I'm just going through and kind of sketching out around my blocky base and putting in the general knowledge and you can always have references you can find pictures of people in three-quarter views and you can definitely take references from those to see your face shapes and see kind of where the cheek comes out and goes back in before it meets to the chin but that's what i'm doing now is just kind of refining those shapes on the outside Now it's time for the ear. The way that I usually do my ears is to make them more with straight lines and sharper angles than the usual like cartoon half circle. So it's kind of hard to explain, but you can just kind of reference the way that I do it and or you could do something completely different. You can even add an elf ear if you want to make it really pointy. Whatever you want. And now it is finally time for the actual facial features. First, I go in with the eyebrows that always helps me to map out the spacing between the top of the face and the eyes primarily but of course you know you just kind of go down from the top and eyeball the spacing for each element you know like the nose and the mouth too And how I draw faces, to keep it much more anime style as opposed to semi-realistic, is by keeping the lines very simplistic. I don't completely mark off circles for the eyes. I keep them open on the bottom half. And for the nose, really the way that drawing works for noses most of the time is just lines to indicate a shadow on the opposite side from that you're looking on it so that's usually how i go in with the noses it's just to kind of give the general shape of what it is by a shadow and then with the mouth i keep it pretty simple this time it wasn't working very well for me today. I don't know why the smile wasn't working, but I'll change it up on different expressions that I want, but it's still really simple. It's just kind of like this curved upside down triangle and then the line I put in it is to indicate the tongue versus the back of the mouth. And finally we have our cleanup sketch or line art. You know, you can do either one with it. So I'm going in with the darker color now to contrast so that way I can actually see which lines I'm following and I'm just kind of gonna overall clean it up before I go in and do the hair. Now erasing my guidelines, it's up for the top curve of the head so that way I can make sure to place the hair properly. Um, I 
get rid of all of my guidelines so that way I can have a much cleaner space to work with and see what I'm doing so that way I can come up with a style for the hair. But if you're following along traditionally, make sure to erase the top line of the head lightly so you can kind of still see the line to make sure that you're spacing things properly, but so that way you don't have to deal with this great big line in the middle of your hair and have a difficult time trying to erase it later when you've got details in. The way that I've always drawn hair is to make it kind of pointy at the ends, but I also keep the lines a little bit more minimalistic most of the time, so it looks like it's all coming from the same general area and it's not like all these individual strands that just get too busy and kind of clumpy or messy looking. And once you have your desired hairstyle drawn in, then you can make sure to completely erase the guideline at the top of the head, and that's pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, I hope it helped you out. If it did, leave a like and comment to let me know, and subscribe that'll help me out and i will see you all next time bye